whether you know why we should be giving grant test or not if you are giving grant test you are on the right track remember you are not just trying to meet the target score every time the competition becomes more tougher so you have to beat the target score. examination hall pressure makes you or pushes you to do silly mistakes and those silly mistakes cost you especially they cost you more in the neat pg because there is negative mark so always analyze this score not in comparison to somebody else but in comparison to your targets hello everyone welcome to physics well amended i am dr patil and today we're going to talk about a very pertinent question how do i analyze my grand test results well whether you know how to analyze your grand test results or not congratulations to you if you have already started giving grand test because you are making positive progress towards your preparedness for your final exam okay now before i talk about the analysis of gt results let me ask you a question why do we give grand tests now one of the common answers i get from the students is that we give grand tests because faculty keep telling us to give gts or my seniors have told that you should give gts before the main exam ha huh, i do agree some of you have some objective clarity about the reasons behind giving grand test irrespective of it whether you know why we should be giving grand test or not if you are giving grand test you are on the right track but today let me tell you some important reasons why you should give the grand test number 1 all of you are preparing for competitive exams neat pg or fmj now you may say sir fmj is not a competitive exam it's just a passing exam you know like in fmj also score matters a lot nowadays because after you qualify the fmj exam you are licensed to register yourself in india but of course you need to complete internship before your name is entered into the register as full registration and to get an appropriate internship post your score again matters so whether it is fmg or the neat pg these are competitive examinations now when it is a competitive examination you have some dreams right like for example after my fmg i want to do internship in a government medical college so you need a higher score in neat pg i want a seat in radiology or dermatology whatever you have a branch in mind so for that you need a score so you should know what is the target score for you to get that branch or that internship post right how do i get to know the target score of course you can analyze the previous years neat pg results right at what score somebody got what rank and then you will also see the counseling data and you know that with what score somebody could get that seat or that internship post so with that you can set the target score remember you're not just trying to meet the target score every time the competition becomes more tougher so you have to beat the target so you should always go ahead of target score in the main exam now whether i'm inching towards it or not how do i get to know of course by giving the grand test so first thing is that you should know what is your target score based on your expectations set a target score and then start giving the grand test of course when you start giving the grand test you will be far away from the target score don't get disheartened by that but as you keep giving more and more gts see whether you are making a positive progress towards your target score if you are making a positive progress towards the target score you are on the right track so that is one reason you should know the target score and gts will help you to understand how far or how near you are to your target score second when you give gts you will be able to identify in which subjects you are strong and in which subjects you are weak this helps you to channelize the energy and time available with you for the remaining time so that you can prepare it appropriately like for example if i notice that after gt is medicine is turning out to be my strong subject so i don't need to put extra effort behind medicine but i notice that my anatomy scores are pretty bad so that means anatomy is calling for attention it is craving for attention i need to give it so whatever remaining time i have i'll make sure that i allocate like reasonable time to the anatomy so that it emerges also as a strong subject and whatever effort i put on anatomy whether it is emerging out as a strong subject or not how will i get to know the next few gts will tell me in the next few gts if i start performing better on anatomy then i know that anatomy is also a strong subject now again it is a positive progress the third reason why you should give grand test is for the customization of the exam process please remember most well trained students whom we are expecting to come out with flying colors have suffered in the examination hall right i have lot of fmg students whom i was expecting to score to 20 to 30 they have struggled or they have passed with bare minimum 
marks exceeding the cutoff of 115 FMG. And I also know in PG students whom I was expecting to have ranked within 500, but they were thrown to 2000, 3000 because the examination hall pressure makes you or pushes you to do silly mistakes. And those silly mistakes cost you, especially they cost you more in the need PG because there is negative marking. Now, how do I eliminate those silly mistakes? Of course, by putting yourself in the examination environment, right? You need to get accustomed to the examination process or the environment. How do I do that? Again, GT is the way to go forward. So please, when you give GT, make sure that you are kind of creating the examination hall. I would suggest that give the GT on the laptop instead of the phone so that you are getting accustomed to the examination all kind of environment. Lock your study room and till you have completed giving the GT, don't walk out because you can't walk out in the real exam. Right? Don't do this, like don't give it in the phone. If you are giving it in the phone, you will solve 20 questions. After that, you will feel bored and you will open an Instagram and watch two reels. So you are not training your uh, neuromuscular coordination and the brain thinking process for the examination environment. You are merely solving questions. Of course, you should solve questions, but GT is one of the objective is a customization to the examination hall or examination process. So try to give GTs in, in scenarios which mimic the real exam. Okay. Then identifying behavioral patterns, very, very important. Because as I've already told you, many of you are prone to do silly mistakes or overthink on the questions. And that often affects your final score because in the examination hall, you will overthink, remark the answers, keep changing like, okay, Examiner is not so cool, he wouldn't have asked such silly questions. So there may be some complexity behind this apparently straightforward looking question. So you will start overthinking and a very simple straightforward question you will answer wrong. First you might have answered right, but then your overthinking makes you go back and answer it wrong. So this is one of the behavioral factors. Then many of you initially get into the examination hall and then you will be like, I have ample time. So you read questions slowly. You think multiple times and then answer. So you're very like defensive, like Raul Dravid's batting. But as the time progresses, you notice that I don't have sufficient time. So then you start hustling through the questions. And when you're hustling through the questions, you ignore sentences or you miss words. And then you end up answering the question wrongly. So time management is crucial. And there are a lot of behavioral patterns in time management between different individuals. So when you give GTs, you identify those behavioral patterns. Like you, you might realize that I'm overthinking and remarking the answers multiple times. So then once you realize that you start working on it, you, you consciously try to minimize those errors in the next GT, in the next GT. So by the time you give the final exam, you have minimized such uh, harmful behavioral patterns, right? So for that reason, you need to give GTs. And the last but equally important is documenting the progress. So when I'm studying more and more subjects, I'm completing more and more topics, my GT score should reflect on it. Not always, many times it takes a dip because the paper may be set more complex or more difficult. Don't take it to heart, but when you look at the graph overall, it should show that there is some steady progress happening with occasional dips. There is some steady progress happening. That means you're on the right track. So the GTs will help you to achieve all these objectives and for that reason you must give GTs. Now let us say that you have you're started giving GTs, how do I analyze the score? So when you give the GTs, first thing you are giving the GT for a particular exam, right? be it FMG or the NEET PG. So make sure that whatever GT you are giving, whether it is MedEdap or other sources, make sure that it is for appropriate number of questions because many a times small mini test is thrown as GTs. Those you use them if you want as mini test, but not as the GT. So then, then your GT quota is not complete. Don't count it until and unless the check test is for the appropriate number of questions, the same number of questions that you're going to get in your real exam. Okay. Once you give the test, look at your score. When you look at your score, like this is screenshot of one of my uh, FMG students and she has, of course, she has set a target score. And when I look at it, of course, she's, this is an FMG mock. She has definitely surpassed the expectations. So now she knows that the preparation is on the right track. Right? So always analyze this score, not in comparison to somebody else, but in comparison to your target score. Because what experience tells us is that over the years, the need PG scores kind of remain same or they, they just progress by 10 to 12%. In the sense, like if I want a particular 
uh, rank. Whatever score last year a candidate had taken, I just have to consider adding 10 to 12 percent more to it, and I will still be getting, or uh, roughly, I'll be getting a similar rank this year. Okay. So set your target score according to that, comparing the previous ranks, and then see whether you are closer to it or far away. If it is far away, you know that you need to put more effort, but make sure that you give the another GT. And hopefully, if your preparation is going right, the next GT will take you closer to your target score, right? So target score, how far I am to it, how near I am to it, and how do I uh, allocate the time for the remaining preparation? That's first thing. Second, after you're done with your score, you know you're closer or away from the target score, then go into the analysis and look at the accuracy. Of course, this is the FMG GT. There is no negative marking. But if it is a neat PG GT, there are negative markings and I want you to pay attention to that. Because if you are doing too many errors and it is eating into your gains, then you need to also identify your behavioral patterns which are responsible for you doing too many errors which are adding to the negative score and you need to minimize that. That is the second thing that I want you to identify from the GT. The third thing I want you to do is go into the topic-wise or system-wise or subject-wise analysis. And when you go into that, you will be able to identify in which subjects you failed well and in which subjects you failed poor. That will help you to make a list of your strong subjects and weak subjects. And by that, you will be able to understand that these are the weak subjects which need more attention. These are the strong subjects which I need to just continue the flow. Probably I don't need to allocate too much extra time. So analyze it subject wise. And the last bit, that is the fourth thing. The fifth thing that you need to do is read the explanations of every question that comes in the grand test because when we frame the questions for the gts we're keeping in mind not just the importance of the question but importance of the topic because like as faculty we analyze which topics are becoming important in the recent years for the main exams keeping that in mind we frame questions so if you not read the explanations your gt is not complete so read the explanations for every question until and unless you're damn confident that I know everything about this topic and I don't need to revise, don't skip it. That is the fifth thing. Coming to the last thing, the sixth point, that is your rank, right? So don't bother about rank in the initial part of your preparation. Initial part of your preparation should be focused on the areas that we discussed so far and whether your GT score is progressing positively or not. But when you are in the last leg of your preparation, that is like three months before your NEET PG exam, or two months before your FMG exam, that is a point where you can take a look at the rank, mainly to understand how far I am or how near I am from my target rank. And also be aware that the rank will be influenced by the number of people taking that particular grand test. If there are lesser numbers, then you will get a great rank, but that may not be the actual rank. That's why I say, do not focus too much on the rank, but towards the end of your preparation, maybe you can start looking into the ranks. Regardless of your rank, again, don't get disheartened. Even if you have three more months left, just three more months left, you can still do a smart preparation and go to your desired rank. So don't use GTs just to just to convince yourself that oh, I'm far away from my dream rank and this year is, is gone. So let me give up and start spending time on Instagram. No, that's not the objective of giving GTs. Objectives I have clarified. Rank is only uh, what would I say? It's a small reward for the effort that you're putting. So see it only from that perspective. Like don't think that this rank will really come into your main exam. Mainly focus on your target score and make sure you are beating the target score towards the last leg of your preparation. And if you give more and more details, of course, it shows up in your results. And with that, I'm wishing you all the best for the exams and of course, all the best for all the grand tests that you're giving. If you have any pertinent questions related to GTs or subject like this, reach out to me on the Telegram or the Instagram and whenever I get time, I'll make sure I address that. Thank you.